You should definitely buy the Switch Lite. You absolutely should not buy a Switch Lite. They said it wasn't humanly possible. All the power and excitement of Nintendo right in the palm of your hand. Only from Nintendo. Now you're playing with power. Portable power. Obviously, one of the biggest selling points of the Switch Lite is its namesake, Lite. It is a smaller, lighter version of the Switch while still allowing you to play the same games. Now, at first glance, you might think it's not really that much smaller, but really the amount that you take off of the sides, the top, and also making it a little thinner makes it a much more portable system. In fact, I could actually even fit a Switch Lite in my pocket, which isn't really an option with the regular Switch, at least not a comfortable one. Now, of course, if we're going to talk about problems that the Switch Lite has compared to a regular Switch, there's definitely the number one issue that it's a Switch that does not switch. Doesn't really make sense. It's a system that doesn't have the ability to use the dock at all. It's a purely dedicated handheld, whereas the regular line of Switches can be used with a dock so you can connect it to a big screen TV. This was honestly one of the kind of big selling points for a lot of people on the Switch in the very first place was this fun idea of something you can play on the go or at home on a TV. You can play certain games that make more sense on a larger TV, you can continue the experience, you can get the most out of it at home while still being able to play on the go. It's just a very adaptable system and the Switch Lite does not give you that experience. This change also comes with a change in weight. The Switch Lite is considerably lighter than the regular Switch as well, which I actually think also contributes to it being a lot more comfortable in handheld mode. It just doesn't weigh down on your hands quite as much, which doesn't seem like a lot for a short instance of gameplay, but if you're playing it all the time on the go, it's really nice to have that reduced weight. Now there's another really important thing we gotta talk about when it comes to Switch Lite versus Switch, and this is something that's a little more fear-based, but honestly, it's a rightful fear to have, and that's the horrifying term of stick drift. A problem that's been known to occur in some Nintendo Switches, the Joy-Cons at least for regular Switches, is the fact that the stick can cause a little bit of damage to itself over time to the point at which sometimes it reads a false input. You won't be moving the stick at all and yet your character on the screen will move to the left as though you didn't hit something. And depending on the kind of games you play, that is an awful thing to have happen. I mean, basically just control is taken away from you at random moments and that's never a good thing. Now, with the regular Switch, this can still happen. It's not something that it is completely immune to. However, if it happens with a regular Switch, it's just the Joy-Con. You can buy another Joy-Con, you can look into fixing it, they're easier to take apart. There's a lot more options of how to handle that situation. But with the Switch Lite, since it's one contained body and none of it's actually very easy to separate or take apart carefully, if that happens, you just have to go for a full-blown warranty. And there are plenty of horror stories of what can happen with Switch warranties. If you don't have your saves backed up properly, you can lose all of your save data, Nintendo could hand you back an entirely different system, and in some cases, things just aren't really fixed entirely properly and go wrong in another month or two. Now, Nintendo has started to be a lot more on top of this issue. They've been really good about the idea of at least taking the system in and fixing it, even when you're past regular warranties, but still, it's a major hassle and problem you don't really wanna deal with. And so, while there's no guarantee this is going to happen to you with a Switch Lite, if it does, it's just a lot bigger of a headache. One thing missing from the regular Switch that bothered a lot of people thankfully made an appearance on the Switch Lite, and that is a D-pad. And honestly, that little feature alone is a big upside for a lot of people. Sure, the regular Switch has four buttons that kind of act like a D-pad, but it doesn't really impart the same kind of experience. And for certain types of games, that is a really important distinction. If you're using it as the main form of movement or control, or if you're playing a fighting game or you have to do rolling inputs, a D-pad just feels a lot more natural and honestly way more comfortable than having these four separated, very clicky buttons. To be fair, there are ways of adding a D-pad to a regular Switch. There's third-party controller options out there and all that kind of stuff, but to be honest, the one built into the Switch Lite just feels a lot better than what a lot of the competition offers as a substitution on the regular Switch. It'd be different if Nintendo offered their own official D-pad version for the regular Switch, but to date, Still not an option. So if you want the best possible D-pad on a regular Switch, something that matters especially to people that are fans of retro games, the Switch Lite has a huge strength in that area. Next, let's talk about screen size, because the regular Switch has a noticeably larger screen than the Switch Lite. And this comes with a couple immediate obvious benefits, the largest of which is just having, well, more screen, you could see things more clearly. In fact, something that's become kind of an argument about some games having problems in handheld mode is the fact that text on them can get very, very small. And so the smaller size of the Switch Lite screen only makes this an even larger issue. Smaller issue. You get what I'm saying. 
Another point in the Switch Lite's favor is its build quality. Not only is the Switch Lite smaller, but it actually also benefits from being a generally stronger designed system thanks to the fact that it has the Joy-Cons permanently attached as one solid unit instead of the slide bar system. To be completely honest, when I first started using the Switch Lite, I did notice the change in how it felt like one more unit, but when I really, really noticed it was when I went back to the regular Switch, because while it's cool being able to add and remove Joy-Cons, they have a kind of permanent light little jiggle to them that's kind of annoying actually, especially once you're used to not having to deal with it. And the Switch Lite doesn't have that problem at all and makes it a lot more comfortable to use. You know, one big fear that people had is that the smaller size was going to make it even more uncomfortable than the regular Switch, and honestly, it's the opposite. Sure, it still has the same kind of grip problem the regular Switch has, but the one solid body just makes it a more comfortable experience, not to mention a lot more durable, which, if you're planning on getting a Switch for a kid, is a pretty good upside. Now this next point is kind of playing off of what we've talked a little bit before with the screen size and the ability to dock the Switch, but I think it's really important to emphasize that one major way the regular Switch has a huge advantage over the Switch Lite is its use as a multiplayer system. See, with the Switch Lite, it's so small and dedicated to the idea of being a handheld gameplay, it's cool if you just want to play stuff on your own. But if you're ever interested in the idea of couch multiplayer for things like Mario Kart, Mario Party, Smash Brothers, these are all games that really much more rely on the benefits the regular Switch has to offer. Whether you want to hook it up to a TV so you can play on a big screen with multiple people in one room, sitting on couches, or even really playing on the go. Something that the regular Switch lets you do is that with its built-in, albeit not super great kickstand, you can set it up as a little tabletop setup and hand each person individually a Joy-Con. And while the screen isn't certainly gigantic, it's large enough to still see things pretty clearly. And in fact, the Switch Lite doesn't have that kickstand and due to its smaller screen, it's just much more of a mess if you ever want to do multiplayer stuff on the go. And honestly, I would just recommend not doing that. So if you want a system that multiple people can play on, they can share, if it's a situation where you're getting it for a household and not just one specific person, gotta go with the regular Switch. Probably one of the most straightforward and simple strengths the Switch Lite has, but is still a really important one that I think a lot of people will care about, is the fact that it is a lot cheaper than getting a regular Switch. Regular Switches at MSRP are $300, whereas a Switch Lite is $200, a whole hundred bucks cheaper. This makes it a lot more affordable if you're buying it for yourself and you don't necessarily want to spend that whole extra hundred bucks and you could save that to buy on games. If you're planning to get it as a gift for someone, that makes it also a lot more easily attainable. The lower price point just makes it a lot more appealing for a lot of people. Not to mention, if you're planning on getting a Switch for multiple people, for instance, multiple kids in the same household, the total cost of buying a lot of regular Switches is a lot higher than just getting multiple Switch lights instead. For another point in favor of the regular Switch, let's talk about battery life. Now, you might hear some people say that the Switch Lite has a better battery than the regular Switch, and that is partially kind of true. If you bought one of the Switches that first came out when they were originally released, those have a really bad battery life, and the Switch Lite is better than those. But since that time, the Switch has had a renewed version. The way you can mainly tell the difference is that when they're sold in boxes, it's a red box instead of a white box. And those have way better battery life than both the regular Switch and the Switch Lite. So if you're looking to buy a brand new system and you just really care about having the most battery life on the go, the new Switch is gonna be the best way to go. The Switch Lite has plenty of other benefits for portability on its side, but as far as just being able to play as long as possible before having to plug in anywhere, regular Switch is the winner. Another big strength the Switch Lite has over the regular Switch is admittedly kind of a shallow one, but still really important for a lot of people. It just flat out looks a lot better. Not just because of the smaller design or the fact that it's one big unibody part, which we've already talked about a little bit, but just in general, aesthetically, they are nicer looking systems. The color choices for the teal, the yellow, and the gray are all a lot more strikingly interesting than just the plain black that you get on the Switch tablet. And sure, the regular Switch has Joy-Cons, you can pick the colors you like, but that still feels like a weird kind of Frankenstein approach, whereas the Switch Lite is one solid looking body that just looks a lot better. And it's not just a matter of how the system itself looks too. As we mentioned, the regular Switch sure has a bigger screen and can help with a few things like visibility, but at the same time, the smaller screen size on the Switch Lite has the benefit of giving you higher pixel density. Because both systems have the same resolution screens, the smaller size of the Switch Lite might be a little annoying for some people, but it does result in better looking images because you're not seeing that bigger resolution on a larger screen. While there are a couple different aspects of performance that the regular Switch excels at, the biggest one is obviously, of course, that ability to dock. If you just 
care about that remotely and don't have any interest in the idea of maybe getting multiple switches down the line or relying on a friend's dock switch, if you really need to have a dock option, then obviously the regular switch is good for you. But if that's something that doesn't really resonate and instead you like the idea of something that is ultimately more portable, a little more comfortable, and just looks a lot better in general, then the Switch Lite is an awesome choice. It, to be honest, while I have used both systems since the Switch Lite has come out, it has become my primary one. Now, to be fair, I do still have my old Switch, it is permanently docked, and I will use that every now and then for some specific cases, like if I want to play Super Smash Bros. But at the end of the day, if it was my money and I was only picking one of these systems to use permanently, I'd go with the Switch Lite. I really enjoy having a dedicated handheld system, and while there are certainly some unique functions and benefits that the regular Switch offers, the simplicity of just the smaller, more comfortable system makes the Switch Lite feel a lot more familiar. For kind of a not very good descriptive point, it just feels right.